Today we're going to be talking about how Newton's laws of motion work in the real world and we're going to be doing some of this. Hit it. Welcome to The Drawing Board, the show that makes science less about this and more about this. I'm your host, David Franklin, and today, we're gonna lay down the law. Rick Grimes. In science, there are both laws and theories, and first of all, I hate the word theories. There's too many people who have, like, diluted the word. I might even do, like, a whole episode on this, but there's too many people who have diluted the word, like, your crazy Uncle Joe, who has his conspiracy theories. Or the bro science people, who have, like, a weak idea of what they might be talking about, but really have absolutely no clue. Just because too many people have used the word for that reason doesn't mean that theory means soft science. It does mean it's supported by firm evidence, and most times theories aren't disproven, they're built upon, they're evolved upon. There are theories, and there are laws irrefutable laws of nature that cannot possibly be argued against like gravity or Newton's laws of motion which we're going to be talking about today and how they're useful in the real world for things like this or things like this so there are three laws of motion the first one is that an object in motion stays in motion unless it's acted upon by an unbalanced force is that you Lori? what are you doing here why have you come why have you come? Go on, get! You know, my family hears me from the other room and they think I'm just nuts. You should see their faces when I walk out of the studio. The second law of motion is that an object's acceleration is directly related to its mass and the amount of force applied to it, or more specifically, force equals mass times acceleration. Put even more simply, it's gonna take a lot more effort to push me over than to push a car down the street. So I will have more acceleration with the same amount of force because I am less massive than a car. And finally, for today's main topic, Newton's third law of motion, because it's what applies to both flyboarding and Iron Man, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So for instance, if I were to get mad and punch a wall, the wall would experience the force from my hand but also my hand would experience the force from the wall and I'd probably hurt myself. A great example of Newton's third law of motion is the flyboard. A jet ski sits in the water, forcing water out a tube that comes out beneath your board and pushes you upwards with as much force as it comes out of the tube with. And also it makes you feel a little bit like Iron Man. An Iron Man suit is also another great example of Newton's third law of motion, but could another inventor slash engineer such as myself even hope to invent such a thing? We're gonna figure it out. The first and most important thing in Iron Man's suit is his arc reactor. Basically anything can be accomplished in the suit if it has enough energy, but it's all gonna come down to this one single arc reactor. Basically the arc reactor, the glowing thing in his chest, is a miniaturized nuclear facility. And since a nuclear facility several miles wide is able to power an entire town, it's totally feasible that a nuclear facility two inches wide could control a single suit. That being said, we have no idea how to make a nuclear reactor that small. No idea, it's ridiculously hard. Plus an even more serious problem is the nuclear capabilities we currently have means there would be a crap ton of radiation just leaking into Tony Stark's body and really to anyone around him, so sorry Piper. That's kind of a nasty position to sleep with someone who has a nuclear reactor in her chest. She'd probably be dying just as fast as Tony Stark, but it's a good thing that the second movie actually mentions that this is a problem because Tony fixes it. He makes it no longer destructive to his body by inventing a new element. Sure, why not? I mean, if you're a movie, go ahead and do that. But for all of you dreamers out there, let this be a lesson to you. If the rules won't let you do something, make your own rules. This is usually the part of the show where I build something dangerous and I tell all of you not to build it because you're not gonna use common sense or be safe or use protection or precautions necessary to make sure that you and everyone else around you is as safe as possible. But we're not building anything today, so this seems like a good place to tell you if you're gonna try breaking rules, one, make sure you're within the law and being safe to begin with. Two, they're rules for a reason, so it's probably best not to break them, at least for legal reasons. And three, if any of you try making a miniaturized nuclear reactor and I die, I am going to be very mad at you. Or at least I would be mad if I weren't dead. 
Because if you do it, and you mess up, you'll probably end up like this, and I'll end up like this. So while we're on the topic, is Tony's suit even possible? The suit itself is made out of a nickel titanium alloy called nitinol. And the average adult male body is about two square meters surface area. So what we're gonna see is if Tony's suit is even liftable. Nitinol is very light and very strong, but two square meters of metal can be a lot. However, titanium body armor is only 1.2 millimeters thick. So if that's all Tony had, it would be ridiculously easy to carry. However, Tony also has all sorts of gears and pneumatics inside of that suit so we're gonna go ahead and assume that it's about one centimeter thick for the gears the pneumatics the wires all of that plus maybe double thickness because it is a pretty strong suit so so far we have two square meters of one centimeter thick metal called nitinol god that sounds like a sleeping drug does it please take nitinol at night in order to assure a long night's sleep nitinol is not a habit forming should be taken at nighttime users should not try to operate machinery while under the influence of nitinol nitinol may cause brain ruptures skin explosion or eyes to glow green like you're possessed by the devil nitinol for your better night's sleep. So there are 20,000 centimeters squared of one centimeter thick nitinol, which would weigh right around, drum roll, 283 pounds, which isn't bad at all. You could totally carry 283 pounds of force. And let's go ahead and assume that Tony has some sort of springs on his knees and elbows and back in order to help him support the weight like an exoskeleton would. And that the thrusters on his feet are slightly on at all times to help him stay off the ground a little bit. So yeah, 283 pounds is not impossible to lift at all. The question I get asked most often is, Tony, how do you go to the bathroom with a suit? Just like that. Next up, could it stop bullets? Well, since 1.2 millimeter thick titanium is already able to stop it, one centimeter thick of nitinol, which is already stronger than titanium itself, is totally able to lift it. As far as the electric weaponry that we always see him get hit by, well, we first have to look at how that works. And for that, we're going to go ahead and look at his own hand repulsor. Tony Stark seems to be shooting out a laser out of his chest and a sort of supercharged plasma in his hand. And if you haven't seen our episode on plasma, you can check it out in the description below. Lasers just shoot light particles and plasma is just a gas. So basically everything that he shoots out of his hand would be really light. So he probably wouldn't experience all that much recoil, which would be really good for this movie. But two, they carry a lot of energy, which proves them to be effective as a weapon. In fact, Boeing has their own tactical laser, which can melt through tanks and wait for it three miles away while being mounted to the belly of a gunship. Not really like a mainstream well-known weapon, but one of them does exist. So lasers, yes, can be weaponized and plasma theoretically could be. But would a suit be able to block those sorts of attacks? Since lasers and plasmas are both electrically charged, we can assume that perhaps Tony had the foresight to put electromagnets in his suit. But when the shots got near the suit, the shots would slow down because of the magnet that was repelling them. And then that the charge would be dealt with because he wore some sort of non-conductive material like rubber. The rubber theory would also explain how the suit appeared extra thick even if the metal was one centimeter thick. And how after being hit by bullets, he'd be able to not bruise as much because the rubber would absorb most of the shock and spread it over the entire width of his body. The electromagnets would also help propel the plasma outside of his hand and keep it contained while it was inside of his gauntlet. But also that same plasma would be able to be guided and pushed out through his hands and his feet for flight. And then the supercharged gas or plasma would interact with the air just like the water does on a flyboard. Unfortunately, the one and very serious limiting factor of this entire thing is energy. And like I said, we don't know how to miniaturize nuclear reactors or make them safe to attach to our chest. Did you just say you're dying? That you? Uh, no, I'm not. Not anymore. What's what's going on? I was going to tell you I didn't want to. You were going to tell me you really were dying? You didn't let Why me. Why did you tell me that? I was going to make you an omelet and tell you. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of The Drawing Board. If you like what you saw, go ahead and like and share this video. If you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. And make sure to tune in next week when we're going to be talking about internal combustion engines as we take a cross-country road trip and start our as we take our cross-country road trip. Also, if you have any ideas for different builds or discussions or games and movies we should review, let us know in the comment section below. And finally, I'd like to remind our audience not to play with any nuclear batteries or non-traditional propulsion methods, because if you do, you'll probably get some of this. <laughs> and I'll probably want to leave the planet like. Nope, 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 nope. I'm done. I'm out. Gone. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. Carl, stop messing with Judith and them guns. Help me dig a hole and raise some pig. You told us to come locked and loaded. Well, here we are. Okay, it's time to get serious.
Till the rest of the episode. David, stop playing cowboy. Teach science like you meant to. Respect your elders. Fix your hair. <laughs> <laughs>